welcome to the Verde Valley Experience. Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate you watching the show. If you want to watch it again or you miss something, VerdeValleyTV.com. Anytime, any day, click on the Verde Valley Experience. All the episodes are on there. Every one we've ever done. <laughs> for the past five years is there all kinds of neat stuff you can look there anytime so we've got a great lineup today lots of things been happening you know spring we're almost into summer we're getting close kids are about to get out of school what are you going to do with them you know you're starting to think about what sports they're going to get into next year and how great this year's sports teams have done it's really amazing so our first guest today are henry smith he's the head coach from camp verde high school softball team we'll also have john brown he is the head coach of mingus union high school softball team those guys rocked so we've got lots of things to talk about as far as that goes and the teams go and then of course the wonderful things about coaching and youth sports these days all that good stuff they're going to fill us in all on that everything you're going to get lots of insider information this year so that's cool then we'll talk with janine trevillian she's the historian for the sedona historical society and the sedona historical museum which is on jordan road in uptown sedona how many times can we say Sedona in one sentence? <laughs> She's going to be here to talk about this really cool thing, the Blue Star Museum program. That is geared toward military families. And what it is, it's free admission for military enlistees, you know, retired, anyway, their family, relatives, things like that, all get into over 2,000 museums nationwide for free starting this Saturday all the way through Labor Day very cool program of course she's going to talk about the Sedona Heritage Museum there's lots of great things going on there then we're going to go on location courtesy of our sponsors at Cat and Verde Links to the Bubbling Ponds Fish Hatchery and we're going to talk with Harley O he is a game and fish fish culturist and let me tell you he loves his job like nobody you've ever seen before he is so cute turns into this little kid when he starts talking about fish. He's going to tell us all about what's happening at the Bubbling Ponds, how you can walk around as a nature preserve, how you can get involved, all the different things that happen during the seasons, really neat stuff about the birds there, whether you know, you're know you happy they're there or you're not, like Harley, because they eat all the fish. But it's a really cool interview. You're going to really enjoy that. Then we'll come back and have music from Tommy Anderson, along with Rosemary Tracy. We have Brandon Bureau on Cajon. Really cool. Rosemary Tracy, have you heard of her? She's amazing. She's going places and she happens to be here. And of course, she's a good friend of Tommy's and she's going to be in the studio with them. And it's going to be great. So don't miss it. Stick around. Anyhow, let's get rolling. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. Henry Smith, head coach, Camp Verde High School softball team. Thank you so much. John Brown, head coach, Mingus Union High School softball team. There we go. Fit that onto a small badge. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, thanks Very for having us. You guys must be tired. It's, it's getting towards the end of the season. You know, you've mm -hmm. got to be like, okay. How you feeling? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a good run. I mean, yeah. I, we're always tired this time of year, but we're excited about the way it ended up. So yeah, it was a good run, but it's a long season. That is true. It is kind of a long season. Game after game, it seems, Henry, every we do a lot on uh, Yavapai Broadcasting. We do a lot with um, airing the games. So mm -hmm. it seems like every week there's been a couple of games for months now and it's it's so neat to see how everyone bands around the radio it's oh let's listen to the game and if you can't go to the game you can hear it or you can watch it on Verde Valley mm -hmm. TV things like that I love how the community really gets involved with sports here mm -hmm. and and you guys rock as coaches I hear nothing but great stuff about you so mm -hmm. so where should we where should we start how the Cowboys do yeah. this season <laughs> well we did good we we made it to the very last game of the season so state championship game yeah. and uh, it was, uh, for us, it was a super rewarding season. It was a challenging. We met every emotion that, that I can ever imagine to, to finally win the state championship game. So uh, to take it to the very end and, um, you know, is it exhausting or is it, what is it? I don't know, but it's, it, it's a good feeling for sure to finally finish the season complete. Yeah, mm -hmm. an awesome season it was yeah. for you. That's great. How about you guys? How about the Marauders? Oh, we had a great season. Uh, it's trumped by his season. He had a great season to win a state championship, but we went, uh, you know, we had 25 wins this year, and uh, we went deep into the state tournament. They don't really place after first and second, but based on the finishing, we were about fourth, and uh, so farthest that Mingus has gone since I've been around, um, and my daughter played at Mingus probably 12 years ago, so wow. it's, it was a good run for us. It's been a good year, and we're looking to build on that next year. Well, that's great. That's the farthest you've gotten since you've been there. So that that's a huge testament. Yeah. How long have you been involved? Uh, at Mingus, this is my eighth season. Wow. I was in Sedona four years before that. Oh, very good. Henry, how about you? How long have you been yeah, coaching been, this team? This is my sixth year. Six I years. did some volunteer work with them, and then mm -hmm. uh, I started out with Little League. So oh, cool. Well, yeah, I went through the whole Little League ranks, and we won a Little League state championship uh, at one point, and then 
uh, stayed with the kids with that group and that same group went on to play in the first um, high school championship wow. with me. So yeah, we lost that game, but you know, they were able to play in, right. play in quite a few. They got there. Yeah, they made it. That, that's so, huge. Yeah. That's huge. What do you see with the young athletes these days? Is it different than it was, say, I know you guys played sports, so mm -hmm. back then. Do you see a difference in how teams play now than, say, you know, 15, 20 years ago? John, you're going, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, you know, the teams now that are at these small schools, most of these kids play sports year round, uh, not just at the schools like when I was in when I was in high school, we played each sport, but we didn't play a whole lot in the summer. Mm -hmm. Now these kids will play year round. They play softball all year, and it shows the competitive level is way higher than it used to be. So that's what mm -hmm. it seems like when I watch, you know, on on TV. When I see that, I go, "Wow, that that's a high school student? Are you kidding me?" Yeah. I mean, the the level of proficiency and and drive that they seem to have. Mm -hmm. Now, being a girl, of course, I'm partial to the, the girl sports. I have to <laughs> say, I th I think the girls are more like. Mm focus than yeah. some of the guys oh, yeah. but that's just me that's my opinion uh, <laughs> that's just you know please don't you know write I don't see that. <laughs> you don't see that you see that well because you guys have experience well, in all ranges so what's yeah. the difference between coaching the girls and coaching the boys Is there um, a difference? you know what I've, I've never I don't have too much experience coaching coaching boys um, with the girls for for me personally I, I have five sisters oh. um, and uh, I think I have five yeah five wow and uh, anyway so I grew up with all girls in my family and my mom and uh, so for me it's like uh, it's just it's normal right. you know like I get it I understand what you know growing up with five sisters mm -hmm. they, they were my my leaders and um, you know role models everything so it's I don't really see the the difference in boy girl sport it's for me it's trying to bring out the competitor in, in anybody mm -hmm. so that's that's my passion is trying to trying to get anybody to dig deep and, and explore their uh, their un untapped you know, the untapped uh, resources that they right. have, so. Very nice. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that, John? Well, uh, like Henry, I've only coached girls. Right. I don't know that I could coach boys. I probably don't have the paint or the, the tolerance level. <laughs> uh, so I've had all daughters, so that's all why right. I got into coaching wow. girls. I started in Little League like he did and worked as a group all the way up through. So I only, I think girls are much more coachable hmm. than boys it, in my experience. So I think they, they want to exceed they want to be the best they can at every part of the game not just one part and so girls are easier to coach for me wow well that's nice yeah i feel validated as a female so. <laughs> you got it right huh? <laughs> well, I well now you in. know <laughs> now yeah, i know now you know wow mm -hmm. as, how about the teams this year who's the standouts we want to give accolades to anyone you think is a is a huge standout this year i know you've got some um some high school kids that are that have maybe got color scholarships i heard there was a couple of those you know mm -hmm. who do we want to talk about this year you can go first yeah um well we have we have a few um you know, we have a strong senior class. In fact, this senior class, um, as freshmen, they competed in, in a state championship game um, four years ago. So this class is a very special group where uh, they made a commitment their freshman year to return. Um, I, I was looking at some, some old footage and things and thinking back, and, and I remember that this group committed and, and they were, we're gonna get back and we're gonna win it. So four years later, I, I was thinking, you know, what did they do? What did they do to win? Did you really put the effort? And you look at the time they've spent on the field and in the gym and in the in the classroom. And yes, yes, they did it. And so this this group is, they they've proven hard work and commitment. You know, all the things that we teach every day. This they bought into it as seventh eighth graders and just kind of, they they fed that into the rest of the team. And so it's so special to have that group, of of kids that. Uh, they kind of just did what you ask, hmm. you know, so. That's nice, mm -hmm. that's great. That's, that is really amazing that mm -hmm. as freshmen, they said, we're gonna come back. Mm -hmm. And they did and they won it, that's, that's incredible. Yeah. That's quite yeah. a team you've yeah. got there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. And how about you guys on the Marauders? <laughs> well, we had a, a big team effort, like he's saying. Your question was probably a little more geared towards what the kids are doing afterwards. And we, we didn't have, we had a lot of standouts, but we do have a couple of kids seniors that are going on to play college softball. Uh, Maddie Bayerano, she's our shortstop, and she's been committed to the University of Central Florida since she was a freshman. Wow. She finally signed her letter uh, last fall, and she was a standout this year. She hit 20 home runs for us. She broke six school records. She was the offensive player of the year uh, for our region. And then uh, 
we had another junior that's going to be an amazing athlete as a senior, Jasmine Schultz. She was our catcher. She got catcher of the year. Wow. Um, yeah, just we had some standouts in that aspect, and a lot of those girls will go on to play college ball. That's great. And what I love is, is when these team players can put all this effort into athletics and also academics. Mm -hmm. Like they maintain wonderful GPA mm -hmm. averages and they, and they do such good work in school and on the field. I, I love the connection between sports and academics, how it really mm -hmm. creates that drive. And it sounds like you guys are excellent at, at bringing that out. Mm -hmm. So the, the fire to coach started back when for you, Henry? Um, well, my, my grandfather. He, he started in Sedona when when things were a little different and there was maybe a cultural separation between. So we're, we're Yavapai Apache um, and I'm half Hispanic, my mother's Hispanic. And um, back years and years ago when things were a little different culturally and, and people were accepted different, my grandfather stepped out and um, was it was a bit of a, a leader in our community where he, where he went out into the outside and uh, got a group of kids together and, and decided, you know what, sports are the way we're going to go and we're going to teach kids how to play. And so my dad and his brothers and, and their friends got together. My dad was a pitcher and so they, they played. They played all over. They started in a little league program and went on and high school ball. So then as my dad grew up, he did the same thing. He got uh, friends together and they went and traveled basketball tournaments. It was, and that's when I was born. So I was born traveling to tournaments. Hmm. We went to softball tournaments and basketball until it was time for me to have kids and I did it for my kids and then I started coaching. So wow. um, it's been a family tradition for us. I'll say. Yeah. So, so it started long before the womb for you. Yeah, it was, it's <laughs> sports. Or, uh, my mom has a, uh, a sports room where it's all the grandkids, nieces, oh, wow. everybody. So it's just, uh, we believe in sports. Wow. Sports is, uh, my dad's always talking about, and, and I teach it to the players where how close uh, sports, or in our case, softball, uh, relates to life and all the obstacles and challenges that we face on the field. Um, it's the same thing when they graduate, and same mm -hmm. thing when they leave the field. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna face anger, frustration. They're gonna face uh, down times, good times, and in softball, you see the same thing. Mm -hmm. All those emotions come together, and right. um, they learn how to deal with that. Yeah, yeah in a compressed yeah. period of yeah. time too. Yeah. John, yeah. how about you? What's your background uh, I'm, there? I'm right there with him on the life lessons. Uh, I, I did it so that I could connect with my own daughters, and then because of that, it, it helped me connect with the other young women that played for me, and I've built relationships with them because we're teaching them more about life than just the game of softball and how to adapt and overcome situations. But on a personal side, this guy actually probably got me more involved in, in being a competitive coach than anybody because back in Little League, I used to have to play against him, and his daughter was an exceptional pitcher, and I don't like to lose. And so <laughs> he kind of inspired me to be a better coach, and because of that, I think we, we've done that to each other for years. Right. But, you know, really it's, it's about teaching the girls life lessons, and it's a passion to win. We both like to win. We hate to lose, but we kind of try to instill that in the girls as well, not just in softball but in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see that. I appreciate that. You know, I, I wouldn't have expected that. I expected, yeah. you, know, you know, more about sports and stats, but this you're really bringing oh, to yeah. light how much like life it is. And it's true. You know, mm -hmm. you win some, you lose some. You have good days and bad days. You go, I could have done a better job with that, or that was awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, that all happens in an hour. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, an yeah. entire lifetime happens in an hour, and <laughs> yeah. you get to do it again. Yeah. And you get a chance yeah. to do it better, unlike a lot of our lives. Yeah. <laughs> we don't get that chance. So yeah. you guys are fantastic. Thank you. Congratulations on very successful seasons. I yeah. think you're amazing coaches. Keep up the good work. Yeah. Thank, thank you. I know you. everyone's Appreciate lucky to support. have you. So thank you for yeah. being here. Thank we'll you. be right back with more of the Verde Valley Experience, so don't go away. Regrow, repair, replace. Regenerative medicine is the process of creating living, functional tissues to repair or replace tissue or organ function lost due to age, disease, damage, or congenital defects. Dr. Forrest Lanchbury and the team at Sedona Regenerative Medicine specialize in finding relief for patients suffering from chronic pain. Contact Sedona Regenerative Medicine to learn about anti-aging medicines that will help your body heal itself. 928-282-2520 or SedonaRegen.com. Solid Rock Fitness is a one-on-one -on -one fitness studio specializing in fitness over 50. I train older adults of all fitness levels, from athletes and avid sports participants, to folks with chronic pain, to those recovering from surgeries. You and I will focus on strength training to improve overall muscle tone, core conditioning, balance, agility, flexibility, and nutrition. Mastery of these components of fitness will help you live your life to the fullest with confidence and competence. 
start your journey toward better health with Ageless Touches Massage Therapy. Licensed massage therapist Richard Stevens uses the latest and best equipment to relieve scar tissue, electronic smog, and tinnitus. Ageless Touches does everything they can to work your issues down to the bone. Improve your path to better health with Ageless Touches Massage. And welcome back to the Verde Valley Experience. We now have with us in the studio Janine Trevilian. She's the historian for the Sedona Historical Society, and she's from Sedona Heritage Museum, which is uptown on Jordan Road. Absolutely love it. My favorite museum. They're taking part in something called the Blue Star Museum Program, where I mentioned earlier at the opening of the show, military families, veterans, things like that, get into about 2,000 museums nationwide for free. Yeah. Very cool. That's a very cool program, Janine. It's wonderful that you're part of that. Um, we heard about it relatively soon after the program started. It's been open, f I think, 10 years now. I think this 10-year anniversary. It's a national program where people who are active military, active duty military, and their families, and that's a pretty broad definition mm. of immediate family, which is very nice, um, can come to museums during the summer between Armed Forces Day, which is this Saturday, through uh, Labor Day in September, and the families, and it's especially geared toward children of these active military mm -hmm. families to make sure they get some fun experiences this summer that won't cost the family to, mm -hmm. to have. Oh, that's true, that's true. Yeah. You know, our, our military gives us so much mm -hmm. that any, anything we can give them, and of course the, the wonderful experience of a museum for a child and for an adult. I love museums. Museums are great. And the program's really expanded. I think the first year we did it, which is a number of years ago, um, there were only make maybe 600 museums around the country. Now they're up to 2,000, over 2,000 mm -hmm. museums. Museums. That includes some zoos and wow. botanical gardens. So I mean, really, um, they're really well set up too. So families can gu just go to just type in Blue Star Museums into the mm -hmm. website because it's a weird website address. It I think. is, yes, <laughs> bluestarfam.org. Yeah. So yeah. you just type in Blue Star Museums, and there's a really easy website once you get on it, and it's got things like how show me a map of where all the 2,000 museums are, mm -hmm. or tell me by state what museums in this state. So if a family knows. Uh -huh they're coming to Arizona this year, mm -hmm. they could actually go there, find out where all the freebies would be for them and the kids or grandkids cool. and come. Wow, well that's great. It's a good program. Yeah. It's a partnership between the National Endowment for the Arts, mm -hmm. uh, the Department of Defense, and then this Blue Star Families Organization, which is their own nonprofit. They provide mm -hmm. all kinds of services uh, around the country to all kinds of military people. Specifically, they focus on the families like families who are just coming into the military or just moving somewhere mm -hmm. so many times they don't know where they're going they don't know what to do they don't know how to find resources that they might need I mean they we don't pay them the best of any uh, government employee in the country so some of them just plain need some help trying mm -hmm. to figure out what to do so Blue Star Families is there as a uh, you know, parachute to help mm -hmm. these families in general. And then with the National Endowment of the Arts, like I said, about 10 years ago, they started this Blue Star Museum program specifically to make sure that even if the military person in the family, the active person is maybe deployed halfway mm -hmm. around the world, mm -hmm. the family is going to get a chance to have mm -hmm. some fun, share memories, take pictures, you know, do that kind of thing in the summer, no matter what else is going on in their life. Nice. And yes. what does it take for you to become part of that program? Why did you choose to do so? Well, um, at the Sedona Heritage Museum, when we first heard about this program, you know, as a small museum, some people might say, oh, you know, you need every dollar you can get. Um, we really looked at it differently. We really looked at it as our mission is service. Our mission is service. Uh, so we really want to make sure the more people have a good experience at a museum, whether it's our museum or some other museum, the better. And with a program like this especially, hopefully we are grooming that next generation of people who will love museums if they have good museum experiences with their kids. So we looked at this and said, this is a perfect thing for a small museum like us. We've got uh, we sit in a public park, so we've got a place for kids to run around play and picnic tables and stuff. So really a, a, a family, a Blue Star family, could come to the museum and the park and spend quite a bit of time. Mm -hmm. So we just thought it was a perfect fit for us. We're happy to do it. Well, that's great. Spend quite a bit of time and no money. I love that. That's, Absolutely. That's the way it should be. And of course, to honor our military and their families. The families 
give such a sacrifice as well. We don't often talk about that. We say thank you for your service and things like that mm -hmm. to our military, but their families, you want to tell the wife, thank you for your service, thank you for letting your husband go off, thank you husband for letting your wife go mm -hmm. off, or mom for letting your kids go off, you know, and thank And thanks you for that. moving away from your family and maybe where you've been all your right. life for a long time and have a whole support system and we'll send you someplace mm -hmm. strange and then we'll send your spouse off. Right. And you will be in this strange place and trying, giving your children, you know, stability and wonderful times. Mm -hmm. So uh, being able to, you know, be able to, like you just said, say thanks to everybody because everybody in the family is affected. Mm -hmm. That is true. Well, that's a wonderful thing. This is how many years you've been part of I believe of this? this is the tenth anniversary and I think we got in either the first or the second or third year, I can't remember wow. which year, that our little museum. It's one of those things where I think they really started small and they started mm -hmm. trying to build these relationships mm -hmm. and build an email list of contacts of all the museums and now they pretty much work through about five different professional museum organizations and history organizations and then so now lots more people people are aware of the program. Yes, for certainly. Okay, active military members or family members, if you want to check out a list of the participating museums nationwide, you can go to arts.gov forward slash Blue Star Museums. You're going to go there. That's an easy peasy. You can get more information as well by going to Blue Star Fam, F-A-M, like family but short, bluestarfam.org. Okay. How is everything going at the museum? The museum's doing great. We're Super. having a good year. Um, we've had a lot of you know, fun things happen. We've got uh, good programs coming up yet too for, and before the 1st of June when we kind of take the summer off. Mm -hmm. um, I just can't say enough good things about our volunteers. Mm -hmm. We have so many good volunteers and they really make the place hum. Oh, and they're always so nice. Every time I go in there, everyone is happy and so happy to be there. Mm -hmm. And they, they range in ages and backgrounds and really a delightful group of people. Oh, and that's what's so interesting. We had a new uh, member or volunteer come in just this week to volunteer. So I got to sit, visit with her. She's lived in Sedona. Now, this is kind of an anomaly. She's lived in Sedona for 46 years. Wow. So she knew all kinds of people and all kinds of stories and what used to be here and what used to be there. So she's going to bring a whole richness to visitors who come. Mm. When she greets our visitors now, she's going to be able to answer questions wow. and tell personal stories, which people love it when our docents mm -hmm. can tell personal stories. Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. The museum is open from 11 to 3 daily, except mm -hmm. for Christmas, right? I think we're about closed about nine major holidays right. a year, yeah. so you got to check the website, but yeah. the big ones. Yeah, <laughs> right. But seven days a week from 11 to 3. That's it. That's we're always there, you're just year round. middle of the day. Yep, that's great. And so many things popping. You, it gets bigger and grander and more wonderful every time. Mm -hmm. Then you have all your different events and uh, fundraisers throughout the year mm -hmm. and things like that, which are wonderful to take part of. If you go to SedonaMuseum.org, you can find all kinds of information about what's happening at the museum, the different programs and talks and hands-on activities, which are mm -hmm. way too fun, and the new arrivals and how to get involved, whether it's with time or perhaps you want to donate something or donate some supplies. Maybe some roofing is needed okay. or something yes. for the for the Sherman, <laughs> Sherman Homestead. Homestead House. How is right. the Sherman Homestead House going? The Sherman Homestead House is going. Uh, we have hit that part of the project where we need to make sure the underpinnings are good. Mm -hmm. So we have had to get some professionals involved and that you know kind of stops the actual work work mm. um, the start that part that you see anyway so mm -hmm. we're digging underneath and you know dealing with foundation and things like that but and then we're doing a roof as you just mentioned yeah, right but uh, the project is moving we're, we've Good. also found some descendants of Sherman family grapevines oh. and we are uh, nurturing Ooh. them along with a partnership with Eric Glomsky at mm -hmm. Page Spring Cellars. I just got a text on my way over here that he is going to be over um, futzing and watering oh, nice. and pruning the uh, Sherman Zinfandel from 140 years ago. These wow. wines, uh, vines have been propagated and propagated and grafted and propagated. Wow. And he's taking care of the ones that we have now and he's just texted me and says, anybody want to come over and learn how to prune a vine, you know, oh, wow. next week? So a good That's partnership awesome. and something really fun to look forward to is someday yeah. Sherman family wine again. Wow. Yes. That is amazing. History is alive. That's right. That is in so In the oddest great. and funniest places and ways yes, too sometimes. but that's what makes it wonderful. It is. Now I, I've got to, I've got to put out some some props and give you some accolades because uh. you were honored by the Arizona Historical Society oh. recently with the reception receiving of the Almerito Award. Yes. Now that, now this, this award is given 
annually to an individual who has made a valuable contribution to the preservation, understanding, and awareness of Arizona and its history. This is a wonderful award. It was very mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. Um, I was my board nominated me. It was very nice of them to do that. And you know, it's pretty humbling as a volunteer and an amateur who's never done anything really in history until I started getting involved with the Historical Society. Mm -hmm. And you look at all the wonderful historians in the whole state of Arizona and everything that people are doing to preserve history. It's kind of amazing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to be singled out in such a group of people that you know. There's a lot of people with a lot of depth and a lot of experience and maybe even a professional background. So wow. I was pretty impressed. Yeah. I was pretty happy. But your passion, it, you know, it, 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 and how it lucky. outshines. Yeah, how lot. lucky I am to be able to do that. Not yeah. everybody can say that. That so is true. I'm very lucky. It's a gift. I, that's yeah. the way I look at it. Well, and it's a gift to everyone else, too, so. because you share that with everyone at the Sedona, Sedona Historical Society, the Sedona H Heritage Museum. Mm -hmm. You know, you're sharing uh, your passion for history with them. And, you know, it's nice that you were recognized for that. That was very nice. Yeah, so. you want to share. It's, it's too many good stories to like keep them to yourself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, that's what I really love about the museum, all the personal stories. Like you say, mm -hmm. with the docents sharing personal stories, I love looking inside people's homes and hearing about their lives yeah. and what they did and the funny little things. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just like he went, he lived here and he was born here and he died here and he did. No, no. it's like, oh, yeah, there was this one time back in band camp when he got you know arrested yeah. and there was wine. And, <laughs> you know, it's so interesting. And of course, yeah. the fruit packing and how beautiful it is yeah. in that particular spot. Uh, 735 Jordan Road, Uptown Sedona. Really easy to find, lots of free parking, open 11 to 3, seven days a week, except for major holidays. Definitely worth going to. And you, you, you chill out a little bit in the summer with the um, programs. We don't have any real programs mm -hmm. during the summer, so it's just the museum sure. during the summer, and it gives us a chance as volunteers to kind of catch up on some small projects too, like we mm -hmm. do a lot of writing, once we do some research, we do some work in the collections room, cleaning up some things and doing backlog projects. Mm -hmm. So there's always things for us. and. Everybody wants to take a vacation at some point in the summer, so you know this is our chance to do that. Well, that's true. Though this summer we have a couple of things going on. We are opening a new permanent exhibit inside the museum. We've carved out a place where we're going to do a history of uh, Sedona's arts community. Hmm. So we're going to be focusing on cowboy artists of America, camera club, uh, local artists, wow. um, some things like that. So we're going to, um, we just got some things loaned by the estate of uh, Joe Beeler, Ooh. Cowboy Artist of America mm -hmm. founder. Cool. So we are working on, uh, we just ordered a new case to make sure everything nice. is professionally done as best we can. Mm -hmm. So we will have a new exhibit opening in about a month. So we'll have at least one more press release to do this summer. <laughs> but when we uh, open the new exhibit, so that will be nice to Great. honor what the arts have meant to Sedona. Mm -hmm. Well, we will come visit you yes, when that ahead. happens. Go to SedonaMuseum.org. Lots of great things happening there. Lots of great ways to get involved. If you want to become a docent, a volunteer, hands-on roofing the, the Sherman <laughs> House or, you know, digging up it's the garden. Or, it's always something to do. So go to SedonaMuseum.org and check it out. Janine, thanks for being here. We'll Thank be right you. back with more of the experience, so don't go away. Show your customers how much they matter to you. Follow up with a real card in just 60 seconds with Send Out Cards. Send Out Cards makes it easy for busy professionals to leave a memorable impression. Stay in touch with a simple one-step process from your phone or computer to their mailbox. Call Judy today at 928-202-2557. That's 928-202-2557. Award-winning Soundbites Grill is an entertainment restaurant located in Uptown Sedona at the Hyatt Pinion Point Resort. Open for lunch and dinner, featuring fresh fish, all-natural hand-cut beef, even a full vegan menu. Family-friendly, open 1130 to 9, late dining on Friday and Saturday. Soundbites Grill has some of the best views of the Sedona Red Rocks. Offers world-class entertainment, food, fun, and music.
welcome back to the Verde Valley Experience. We're now here at the Bubbling Ponds Fish Hatchery. We're here with Harley O. He's a fish culturist. That sounds like a really cool job. It is a, <laughs> is a kid's dream come true as a position for a career. Right, okay, what does a fish culturist do? Basically, uh, we work for Arizona Game and Fish Department here for the state and we grow fish. Yeah. Um, we feed fish, we clean up after fish, we stock fish, um, and we basically just handle the fish side okay. of Arizona's fisheries. All fish, all the time. All fish, all that the time. It does sound like a kid's dream, for sure. Now here at the Bubbling Ponds, we're surrounded by all these beautiful ponds. With all, What's going on in these behind us? So basically everything here on the facility, we have razorback suckers, which are a native endangered species here in the Southwest. They can get up to three foot in length and about 20-ish mm -hmm. pounds, but they can live over 40 years in the wild, wow. which is unheard of. Um, they are mainly in the Colorado River. That's where most of our fish go to. They're also here in the Verde River drainages. Wow, neat. So you, you raise them here, and then where do they go from here? So from here, we do our harvests, and when we harvest them, we stock fish that are over 305 millimeters, so your 12-inch fish mm -hmm. uh, get separated from your short fish. Okay. Um, the stockable 305 millimeter fish get a pit tag. It's like a radio transmitter the size of a grain of rice embedded in the the soft really? muscle of the belly. That way each fish that's scanned gets one of those put in them and then we take and stock those into the Colorado River so we know exactly the size of that fish, the date that fish was stocked huh. and where it came from. Okay. So when they do their sampling in the wild and that number gets pinged on their antennas, they know that that fish is still alive or wow. if they catch it in a net mm -hmm. they can remeasure it and weigh it and see how much it's grown and where okay. it's traveled within the okay. river system. So you can uh, the life cycle of the fish you can see yep. what's so, surviving what's doing well what maybe not isn't okay. Yeah so these That's are endangered cool. species so they're not humans can't consume them legally ah, okay. and it's all for restoration efforts. Okay great now uh, the humans can't consume them but the otters and the herons is all kinds of Yes. things happening behind us. There's otters, you can't see those right now, but there's herons flying around, all kinds of birds. It's, it's kind of like a all-you-can-eat buffet for the wildlife out uh, here. Unfortunately, it is, and that's something that we have to deal with having a fish hatchery. You know, we always have the, the blue herons. We mm -hmm. also have cormorants that fly in. Mm -hmm. uh, we have mergansers, and we also do have the river otters here on Oak Creek. Right, well, the vicious little creatures. <laughs> And there's really nothing you can do about the wildlife. I mean, it's completely open. There's a beautiful duck behind us now. I mean, it kind of looks a bit like a wildlife sanctuary. And, so, and that's that's in essence what the property here is. Um, we have a mile and a half, give or take, uh, important bird area nature trail loop wow. that we have. Um, we have a main public parking lot, and then there's signs and information around the property. Mm -hmm. But uh, people come from all over the world, and they, you know, go to Sedona, but they come here sure. to check off different birds on their list. Absolutely. Well, you've got the uh, an Audubon Society pavilion over there, so yep. the Audubon Society must come out. I've seen, I don't know, two dozen birds since we've been standing here. Yeah, so um, we, we get everything for the migratory bird-wise. Um, we also get all the ducks and stuff that come through. Mm -hmm. um, we get uh, western tanagers are always gorgeous to look at. I saw one the other day. We get the cardinals. Oh, yeah, we get. I'm not really a bird guy, but mm -hmm. we get a lot of different uh, waterfowl and birds coming Neat. through. Yeah, you're not in the air stuff. You're under yeah. the water. You're the underwater guy. I'm, I'm the fish guy. <laughs> so if people want to come and walk around, do the nature trails, do some bird observing, they can do that uh, during certain hours. How many days a week? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, we're open all year except for Christmas and Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. um, daylight hours pretty much apply. Um, public parking lot. We do not have a restroom here on this facility. Okay. Across the creek at Page Springs Fish Hatchery, there is a restroom available. Okay. But uh, this is still really, you know, just kind of wild. Oh, so yeah. you're walking on the trail, you can see coyotes, you can have, oh. you know, different wildlife. There's a lot of white-tailed deer on the property wow. and mule deer. Um, so there's, it's, huh. it's a great place to come yeah. and be in nature now. No fishing. No fishing. Right, no fishing. No fishing. No fish uh, <laughs> tackle on the property and. Uh -huh. Uh, no walking through the property to get to the creek and go swimming or fishing and come back on. It's a biosecurity uh, ah, risk. That's and, interesting. Uh, but basically from the bridge down to Page Springs Vineyard is game and fish property along the creek. So a lot of people okay. like to access that for swimming and fishing right. and boating and stuff like that. Okay. But here on the property on Page Springs Hatchery as well as Bubbling Ponds, no okay. water can come back on a few Right, no cross-contamination. Yep. That can be as simple as, as someone would wear wet sandals. That's exactly what And then what come walking is. through, and now you have a biohazard problem. Mm -hmm. Same with Ooh, people exciting. walking through with their dogs from the creek. With the dogs from the creek. Do you allow yeah. dogs on this property? Dogs are allowed on the property. Okay. They must be leashed, and uh, we do have dog away stations to pick up after them. So. Okay. 
Well, that, that's good to know. Always pick up after your dog, of course. Obey the leash laws and things like yep. that. Of course, bring your camera, but not your fishing tackle, yeah. for sure. Now, this time of year, so it's coming towards the end of May. What happens here? Where are we in the cycle of the fish breeding? So basically where we're at now is uh, spring spawning. Uh, our round-tailed chub pond, which we have brood stock for the state, they're already spawned and we're getting small fry out of them. Mm -hmm. uh, in November, December, we'll harvest that pond and stock those fish out into Oak Creek and, okay. and Verde River. But as far as the razorback suckers go, we're almost done. It's growing season for us. We mm -hmm. stock in the winter. Okay. Um, but we do have Florida strain largemouth bass that we are attempting to do our first nice. spawning. So uh, That's very exciting. It is very exciting. A lot of the, uh -huh. the fishermen are very excited about now, that. Now, is it complicated to, to have fish spawn, or you just kind of throw them in there and go, good luck, guys? Or do you actually have to like really um, work chemical water and the type of feed? And Yeah, you really don't have to worry too much about that with, with our kind of spawning. Um, most of it's just natural in oh. our round tailed chub pond we put in spawning media which is basically a b gravel sure and uh they do their thing and then oh. the fish grow nice um as far as the bass go we don't have a facility made for the bass yet and we can't have them in the ponds out here for spawning so we mm. kind of have uh coconut fiber mats that we put in the in the raceways uh -huh. and they spawn their eggs on there then we take them out and we uh oh put them in a controlled environment so we can get the fry because okay. when they come out they're almost microscopic. Wow, well that so, would be challenging yeah. I would think. Now do you have to feed them? Does someone come through twice a day and throw feed in the water? Yeah, so so our ponds up here we usually feed half the regime in the morning and the other half in the afternoon oh. before we head home. Wow. Um, the fish in our ponds, these lower ponds here are pretty shallow, our upper ponds are about seven foot deep oh. and uh, the fish learn that about that time, they can feel us walking out on the catwalk with the vibrations, and oh, they know yeah. we're feeding them. I've seen those catwalks. So, ah, that must be fun. Do they all kind of like koi? Do they? It, all it is like cool. Surface? So a lot of people think of feeding fish like the trout, where you throw it on the surface or other fish, and they just hit the surface like piranhas. Right. Here, they're they're sucker fish, so the mouth's on the bottom. Oh. So they'll all of a sudden just kind of come up big and slow as a huge, basically covey of fish. It looks like with wow. birds, and then one of them will spook, and the whole thing will just shatter, and they'll just scatter. Wow. And then they'll slowly come right back huh. and keep feeding. But it's they're they're neat species, that really is cool. really neat species. Is, I can tell you like your job. I do, I do. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for giving us all this information for meeting us out here. If people want more information, should they go to azgfd.gov? Okay. Yes, the Game and Fish website will send them in the right okay. direction, and also they can stop and talk to me or or Sarah Taylor, okay. supervisor here, and. Okay. Uh, We'll get them pointed in the right direction. We love the public. Great. Harley, thank you so much. You're welcome. We'll be right back with more of the experience, so don't go away. This is Bruce Morrow, Transportation Manager for Cottonwood Area Transit. Remember, we cover the entire Verde Valley in Sedona. Cottonwood Area Transit has you covered wherever you want to ride in the Verde Valley, all day, every day. Take Cottonwood Area Transit through Clarkdale, Verde Village, and from 26 locations in Cottonwood. With Verde Links, it's a quick and easy trip to Sedona every day. Don't forget our connectors to Camp Verde. Visit CottonwoodAZ.gov for Cottonwood Area Transit and take a seat. Let's go ride!
old woes Hoping secretly someone will smash them all I will accidentally knock you out There's something wrong with the words that leave my mouth And this won't last Are we destined to I loved it, guys. I loved it. That was awesome. Oh my gosh. All right, in the studio, we have lovely and talented Rosemary Tracy. You are amazing. Oh, of course, you. Tommy Anderson, standing yeah. tall there. Nice yes. to see you as always. And Brandon Biro. Thank you for your excellent work on the cajon there. That was amazing. Okay, so we got to remember speak to the mic. Yes. You must, you know this as musicians. Yes. Rosemary, yes. wonderful, amazing. Tell us about yourself a little bit, if you would, please. Um, well, my name is Rosemary Tracy Erickson, and I'm from Prescott, Arizona, mm -hmm. um, by way of Alaska, a tiny town <laughs> called cool. Palmer. <laughs> wow. Um, I own a salon in Prescott right now, um, Crimson Chair, and I'm an educator of cosmetology as well. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to do it all. <laughs> wow. Well, that, that makes sense why you're so beautiful. Oh, hey, thanks. We kind of go back <laughs> you know what you're doing there. I know some so tricks. That's great. Oh, yeah. but I, I love it. I'm, and when you said Prescott, you really have this Prescott vibe about you. Prescott Thank has you. this earthy cowboy mm. grunge yet hip and oh, cool and sexy you. all at the same time yeah. i mean that's you uh, which is thank very you. cool 
Yeah. Which is very cool. And your music is lovely. I loved the tempo changes. Oh, in thank that song. you. It yeah. was so interesting, mm -hmm. you know, and the little things every now and then with the, it, the pauses and it's just great. You know, you yeah, usually yes. with songs you get something, okay, we're, this song is this tempo and it stays in that tempo with yeah. a few changes here and there. But no, that was very cool. I really liked cool. that and Thank the lyrics you. too. I really liked yeah. a Thank lot you of your much. lyrics in there. Uh, what inspires you to write songs like that? Can't help it. It's just stuff goes through your head and you have to capture it um, mm -hmm. before it's gone. Um, yeah. So yeah, I just can't, it's the muse. You'd have to write it down. Um, a lot of times it'll be a lyric first. Sometimes it'll mm -hmm. be a melody and um, the rest kind of follows. And then um, I'm recording with Tommy Anderson, actually, at his studio. They are helping me with my second album. And um, the songs are really starting to take on a new life of their own at that point. Um, nice. Just because a lot of my stuff is on stage by myself with a guitar. Mm -hmm. And these guys are really helping me make them into songs. Well, yeah, so. it definitely fills out the sound, mm -hmm. which is great. And congratulations on working on your second oh, album. Thank you. Can we find your first album anywhere? Yes, it's on CD Baby. If you search my name, Rosemary Tracy, um, mm -hmm. I was not married at that point. Um, it should be on CDBaby.com. Um, the next one will be probably be Spotify or iTunes, Rosemary okay. Tracy Erickson. So. Super. And if you go on Facebook and go to Rosemary Tracy Erickson, we can find out what you're doing, yes. yeah. what's up, where you're playing, mm -hmm. where, you, where are your normal haunts? Oh, man. I've been playing a lot through Prescott. Uh, my next gig is June 21st at the Capitol Canyon Club, cool. which is a closed gig, unfortunately. Okay. Um, but I am playing at the Meadery at 7 o'clock oh, nice. on July, I want to say 6th, uh, okay. 7 o'clock to 10 p.m. it should be. Great. So that'll be a great open to the public gig. Nice. So, yeah. And you do keep those on your Facebook page. I do. So yeah. if we go to Rosemary Tracy Erickson, at Facebook, yes. you know, we're going to find They'll all that posted. information yeah. out there. Now, your first album, is it different from your second album? Have you found yes. that you've grown in the middle oh, somewhere? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I recorded my first album when I was probably about 10 years younger. <laughs> and a lot when you has were eight happened. years old? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I impressive. like you. I like you. <laughs> no, um, I'll be 35 this June, actually. Wow. And I feel like my voice has changed and my values oh, have changed. And yeah. the way I write has definitely changed. Mm -hmm. So. I do hear that. We've uh, been running a while, and I talk to musicians, and I watch them grow in a two-year span. Wow. So in a 10-year span, even in a six-month span sometimes, yeah. uh, the younger musicians, they're finding themselves and finding their sound. Mm. It, it seems that you have definitely found yourself, though. Thank you. I don't see, you know, any issues there. So that that's just wonderful. Thank you. I and it's so neat, the three of you together. And, of course, Tommy, we've, we've known you for years, mm -hmm. an amazing fixture of Jerome mm -hmm. and the Verde Valley itself. To lend your skills to, to this and become a trio with Brandon, that's really a different sound, you know, mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. But it helps fill you out. With, so it's, like, wonderful. Yeah. This is fun. Yeah. And I can say in the studio... Yeah. Yeah, so she's sounding terrific. Oh, I bet. Yeah, congratulations on your studio. It's a relatively yeah. new venture for you, isn't it? Uh, you know what? Yeah, I used to have a studio back down in Tempe, Arizona. And uh, so it's taken me, you know, I've been up here five years now. So it took me until about eight months ago to get this one fired up. Wow. And yeah, it's going terrific. And, and what a great resource you are for musicians in oh, the area you. now. Yeah. You know, it, not only in the way you share your talents, but your your professionalism and your your mm -hmm. knowledge of the industry and things like that. And you're just, he's just easy to work with, isn't he? So easy. I know. You're just easy <laughs> to work with, which is great. I mean, who goes into a studio and go, wow, that guy was easy to work with? Yeah. You don't say yeah. that stuff. Yeah. So, so that's very yeah. cool. And yet you still, I don't know how you do everything. So you're, you're performing with, with Rosemary and Brandon, then you mm -hmm. perform with the Jerome Ukulele Orchestra. Which I'll be doing tonight. You, so you, after I leave here, busy. I've got a half hour to get See, to Jerome and do the Jerome Ukulele Orchestra. Put one orchestra. guitar down, pick the other one up. I've got the gear in the car uh -huh. already. And so. the last Fridays at Vino de Sedona, you do the Beatles show? Yeah, so I do a Beatles show uh, the final Friday of each month from 7 to 10 in Sedona. Mm -hmm. And it just brings everybody out of the woodworks. Oh, and everybody knows every word and every chord to every song. So I put up a spare mic, so... Wow. If you come up there, just get up and just sing get up with and me. Sing. Yeah, sing? I, anybody can get up and sing with me. So. How fun is that? Yeah. Well, that's too fun. Yeah. And then you have your own sound, too, though, besides the Beatles and besides oh, sure. the ukuleles and besides everybody else and all that stuff. You have your own individual sound. Yeah, and I've got, uh, well, what I'm, one of the things I'm doing at shows now is I sell flash drives. So I sell my own CDs at, at shows, but on a flash drive, I've got 13 records, and now it's going to be 14. Whoa. 14 CDs and what I wow. do is I put the the latest music that I've been recording on the flash drives so everybody gets to get me huh. right up to you know wow. the, this last week last Saturday I released four songs on iTunes and it'll be on Spotify and iTunes mm -hmm. Google Amazon and I just finished another song 
yesterday. Wow. So there's another one, and I finished another one Tuesday. So that's six tunes. Wow. And then we get to experience those. It's yeah. not something we have to wait around. That's a new thing. I want, is everybody going to start doing that? That's amazing. We you don't have what? to wait the for albums The only reason anymore? I did is people <laughs> kind of don't buy CDs. They don't put CD players in cars anymore. But they'll put You're flash right. drives. You can put a flash Get drive out, in your really? car. I got the wrong car. <laughs> 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 I got the wrong car, too. Yeah, mine's old school. Put a flash drive in a car? Wow. I just, I just got rid of my cassette players. Oh, so my God. Yeah, you know, yeah. I hear cars are driving themselves now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the music industry, you uh, you got to change along with it. Yeah. Well, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's, so it's working. And, uh, hmm. yeah, like I say, I'm just busy, you know, between yeah. the music store in Jerome right. and uh, recording studios three days a week mm -hmm. and doing that. And then I was playing about 175 nights a year. So now I'm cutting back. So a little over 100 <laughs> something. 100. That's still a lot. It's still a lot. Yeah. And hmm. but like today counts as two gigs. So, well, you know, there you go. See? Here and tonight, so this yeah. is this is this is a gig. Right, of yeah. course. Thank yeah. you. I pre yeah. oh, I appreciate being thought of as a gig. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> but you love it. You can see it, and you love it. And yeah. Brandon, you love it too. I yeah. can see it. Yeah. I can just <laughs> see it when the music. You know, everybody sits there, kind of like, oh, and the music starts, and everybody becomes, you know, who they are as a musician. It's always fun to see that. You know what? You're very true. So. Sometimes going into gigs, you're a little nervous, but it, you know, as soon as I get out all the gear set up, because mm -hmm. it's a lot of gear, but then you just start playing, and the first couple measures, you're like, oh, finally, uh, I can yeah. relax now. Right. And you get three hour break, you know, yeah. from the rest of the world, and nice. you just get to play and so. Right. Yeah, you lose yourself in that for a yeah. little while. It's yeah. a, a lot of times I see musicians that go into almost a meditative state, mm -hmm. and they kind of really become the music, and that's the difference between a, a good musician, a real musician, and someone who can play music. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a very big space between mm -hmm. someone who plays music, mm -hmm. you know, lots of people can play guitar and sing, and then a musician. There's a right. big difference there, the right. quality. And I'm always saying this, how lucky we are in the Verde Valley to have such amazing quality musicians and so many of we've you. We've got, yep, yeah, and we've it's got some wonderful. great musicians and Rosemary's gonna be the girl to keep your eye on. So oh, yeah. she and I did a tour in California last year and uh, so that's when I first met her. Nice. Yeah, so keep your eye on her because okay. here's the thing, I'm working hard uh, and I'm getting contacts in Nashville, but we're going to get her a Grammy. Nice. Or two see? or three or four. There you go. See, or seven he's or a good eight. guy to have on yeah. your side. Yeah. yeah. So, well, yeah. that's cool. Again, go to Rosemary Tracy Erickson, correct? Mm -hmm. Uh, at Facebook, mm -hmm. and then of course TommyRocks.net, TommyRocks.com. Yeah. Check out the music store up in Jerome. Say mm -hmm. hello. The recording mm -hmm. studio is amazing, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. thank you guys for being here. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And now, Tommy, you're going to treat us to a song. Is it one of your originals or a cover? No, this is an original. Neat. Um, and so I just released this uh, this last weekend. Wow. And the YouTube video is up. Oh. And just waiting for everything to go through iTunes and Spotify. Nice. Congratulations. So, yeah. Well, it's hot, it's fresh, and you heard it here on the Verde Valley Experience, unless you caught his gig last week where he released it. But <laughs> if not, you've heard it here on the Verde Valley Experience. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, go to VerdeValleyTV.com, check us out on Facebook, and we'll see you again next time.
是你。